The birth of the Peace Corps signaled to the world what together we can do for the freedom of men, as President Kennedy said in his inaugural address. Like the Peace Corps, UCLA was molded out of a sense of optimism and a dedication to service. So it's no wonder that we've enjoyed this long-standing partnership. Our celebration is tempered because of the recent passing of Peace Corps' first director, Sergeant Shriver. The Peace Corps' enduring success owes much to his spirit and to his vision. We're honored tonight to have his daughter Maria and his son Bobby with us. I'm proud to share with you that we received a letter from First Lady Michelle Obama recognizing our strong partnership and offering congratulations on this milestone anniversary. We are deeply appreciative that the First Lady took time to share her thoughts with us. So please join me in welcoming Peace Corps Director Aaron Williams. Thank you. There will be better weather. The UCLA and the Peace Corps have been deeply connected since the earliest days of our agency. Now it's my distinct honor to bring my career back full circle to serve as the 18th Director of the Peace Corps. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight's nonpartisan. And, uh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> OK. Uh, in 1951, a US congressman from Massachusetts was on Meet the Press. And he had just gotten back from an overseas trip with his younger brother, Bobby. And he uh, met a lot of Foreign Service people. He wasn't too impressed. He said, what happened to these? Where did these people come from? He says, when I go to college campuses, I see a lot of well-rounded young people that would love to go overseas and work for something in development and represent our country. How come none of them are out there doing it? What's the matter? We got all these intellectuals that love to go to cocktail parties. Why don't we have well-rounded people out there? Well-rounded, he kept saying the word over and over again, well-rounded people. And that was 60 years ago this year. And of course, 50 years ago yesterday, that Congressman, then President, John F. Kennedy, created the Peace Corps to bring regular American people, not particular, well, some of us, well, some are intellectuals, <laughs> regular, well-rounded people, a lot of them generalists, out into the world to do good work and help the world develop and maybe, maybe leave a decent impression of America while you're doing it and learn a lot. And most important, I always said this when I was in the Peace Corps, what would Jack Kennedy be doing here? Having some fun <laughs> and having some adventure and doing good at the same time. And that's what I think the Peace Corps has been. And here we are tonight to talk to five really wonderful people about their experience with the Peace Corps and how it has developed over the last 50 years since yesterday, 50 years ago, March 1st, 1961. Being in the Peace Corps and going away to another country far from America for two years is almost like having your own immigration experience, to go to another culture, to adapt to it, to learn the language, and it's almost like we Americans sort of learning the model of the great immigrant experience by going through it ourselves. Interesting, isn't it? So I want you all, I've warned you about this, Aaron, and you're first. Then, then I'm going to work my way through Haskell and Maureen to Francoise uh, to uh, Frank. When you think of your Peace Corps experience, just the two years you were in it as a volunteer, which is the heart of the Peace Corps, Sarge Schreiber said, it will not be driven by the staff. It will not be a professional operation. It will be a volunteer operation run by the volunteers. It will be that, well, not run by them, but the heart of it will be the volunteers. <laughs> They're the ones that matter, the frontline troops. Your experience, what comes to mind? What, when you think of your Peace Corps experience, what was it? I was terrified by the awesome responsibility that had been dumped on my shoulders. Now it was no longer just a romantic idea. Here I was face to face with a foreign language, a different culture, and I, tomorrow morning, when that rooster sounded off, I was gonna be right there front and center with 50 teachers who were expecting me to help them get a high school diploma. I got to Columbia when I was just, had just turned 21, and um, there were people still in where I lived, it was a very poor barrio, and it was unheard of that a young woman would live by herself in such a place. And it, the Colombians 
couldn't believe it. When you were a woman or a girl in my era, you could be a teacher, you could be a nurse, you could be a secretary, or if you really wanted to see the world, you could try to be a stewardess on an international airline. <laughs> and so for me to be able to go down and be thrown in the middle of a barrio with, all by myself, and whatever happened after two years, I made happen, that was a very liberating experience. The way people reacted to you as a young American coming into their country, and they're the host. It's their call. Everything's their call, as Maureen said, and, and you said, Rascal. It's their call, how they relate to you. I became the expert on civil rights. You know, I had to, I, I had to interpret every speech that they heard that Martin Luther King gave. I had to talk about you know, foreign policy. It was amazing that here I was, 20 years old, and they had these great expectations <laughs> about my knowledge and understanding of the world at large, right? And so I, I adapted to that role. <laughs> in Ethiopia, we were more than 60% of the secondary school teachers in that country. It had an enormous uh, impact. And it, you know, I've been to Africa over 200 times since I went into the Peace Corps. And I'm amazed at when I see Peace Corps volunteers. We have them in Ethiopia now there. And I say, geez, did I look like that when I was in the Peace Corps? <laughs> We, we, we didn't know from diddly what we were doing. <laughs> but you know what? We had an enormous impact. And I believe of all of the programs in my 50 years of experience with Africa, the Peace Corps is the most important institution of all of our activities that we ever created. Walking on the street near the Peace Corps location, and uh, I saw a man coming toward me, and he was crying. And I said, I stopped him, I said, what's the matter? And he said to me, the president has been shot. And I said, you mean President Belaonde, who was the president of Peru then? And he said to me, I wish it were. <laughs> 1960. It's, you're saying a lot, Frank. <laughs> anyway, I have one little story, not to match that, but um, it was the summer of 1969 and a friend of mine, who was in community development, Steve Hank, and we we're in Swaziland together down in the southern part, and he took his people from his area out up uh, onto a hillside, and he wanted to show them the stars and all, and he wanted them to show them something in particular. And they're all out there together, and here's this young American guy, and, he, and, and, and Swazi guys, and they're all sitting around together, and he's pointing up at this light going across the sky, and he wanted them to be out there for that event. It was uh, our astronauts going to the moon for the first time. There's this one um, uh, student, he became my best friend, his name is Jero, and basically I would take him into that internet cafe, I'm using you know, the money that Peace Corps gave me to live and buy food so that I can survive, and I'm using that money in that internet cafe to teach him how to you know, use Hotmail, because I want him to email me when I'm gone, just so that we can keep the communication to see how the you know, health magazine is going. And he just couldn't do it. And I was spending so much money you know, in that internet cafe, and I was really upset, and I was getting frustrated with him, and it was just not going anywhere. Two years later, I get an email from him. <laughs> so you go there, and you're working on the priorities of that community, the village, wherever you're gonna be working. And you gotta figure out what those priorities really mean when you sit down day to day with somebody to try to help them solve their problems. And so you have to learn to be empathetic. You've got to do it in a different language. And so you're working on developing your language skills. And you've got to learn how that's just the, the beat and rhythm of that society. That makes all the difference in the world. And so you learn to be a very, very good listener. I got to tell you that those skills make a big difference in the rest of your life and your career. We just negotiated the first broadband that I negotiated for the country last year where Ethiopia is now connected to the internet for the first time. I think we're middle, middle family. They're middle, middle class, just middle people. And uh, we're not poor, we weren't rich, we're just regular people. And we, but they were kind of in a rut. You live in sort of near suburbs, you go to college, you go back to the same neighborhood, you, you raise a family, you sort of get a house on the shore if you're lucky. You know, you do these things as career goals. And I got shaken completely out of it by the Peace Corps. I'm the Democrat in my family. Uh, I got involved with people. Uh, the racial thing changed my life, meeting with African Americans and working with Africans. It sounds so odd, but when you spend two years among Africans, you have a different feeling about people of color. You just do. You have a, com a confidence of personality and 
And it's, it's amazing, almost embarrassing to admit as Americans, we all come up with a tinge of racism in our country. We come up with it, and it's part of our, and to be able to lose a good chunk of it because the Peace Corps is a liberating, wonderful thing. It just is for, for us. And, uh, and I was, I think, the best basketball player in Swaziland, by the way, just to get rid of all ethnic stereotypes. Thank you.